the unit. They, they say if you insulate the house up to R38 and not insulate the access panel, it's like having an R38 up in the attic. Mm. That's right. That's not, that's not important. Okay, so knee walls are important. Heat ducts. Heat ducts in the rim joists. So sometimes are they uh, along the outside wall? Most of the heat ducts go along the outside wall, under doors and windows. You see them come in there. When you go in the basement, if you have a basement, you look up and you see it going up. You want to make sure that you get your insulation up behind there on the rim joist. Because a lot of people just kind of put it up there and then leave that void there. And what's going to happen is you've got heat running through there, you have cold outside, you're going to have excessive sweating in that area. So you get your, your insulation up behind that, uh, that heating duct. And now when you get up in the heating duct, some houses have old heat duct systems where they didn't seal them up properly. So you can get a canister of um, duct sealant and get a paintbrush and go around and paint this stuff over all of your, seal, your seams. Anywhere that the metal comes together and where it goes down onto the drywall, just get up there and spend an hour or two just painting that stuff up there. It will be such a blessing to you to do that. Um, hold on a second. Are you there? What are you doing, man? I just took you there. I want you to take me there. <laughs> really? You were talking can you about take ceiling. Me, can you take me back to my list, please? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Okay, so with the heating ducts, um, I had one house that I insulated when I wasn't aware of this situation where I went to blue insulation all up over everything and there was a uh, cold air return that wasn't sealed. And even though we came in there in blue cellulose insulation, the cold air return was sucking in cellulose and going into the heat heater and then blowing dust all throughout the whole house. And this woman, that she was a sweet old woman and it was driving her insane. And I had to go back over and over and over and over and over and do backflips to show her that I cared about her and I'm trying to find and fix the situation. Finally, she fixed the situation, but it wasn't my fault per se. It was a poor heating system. But now with that experience, I, I look for that before I even get into that issue. So look at your heating system. So your duct system, and if it's not sealed, spend a good amount of time just looking it over, take a flashlight, get it well lit up there so you can do a good investigation. If you need somebody to do that, let me know. Um, sound walls, what's it? Okay, sound walls, any areas that you have sound going through the walls, if you have a double house and somebody's living on the other side, or if you have a teenager that's blasting their music, you can drill holes and blow that with cellulose insulation and make that problem, for the most part, go away. You can insulate floors too. If you got a drummer downstairs in the basement, you can insulate the floors and, and greatly reduce that pain. Um, walls, floors, ceilings, attics, attic duct returns, kitchen exhausts. Um, Let's talk about the bath fans. Yeah, the bath exhausts. I, I got a, a diagram right here because this is important. So many houses you come to are, are you know, bath exhaust fans are ran straight up in the attic. Just it's still common to this day. Hmm. So what? Airlock does is he'll actually run these things up through the roof like a roof vent. And will run them, let's say your bath fan's right here, your your bathroom's right here. He'll take it and it'll be insulated, it will be insulated to see, right? Yep. And through the soffit, right? I mean, not through the soffit, but through the uh, roof deck. Why don't you want to do it through the soffit? You can do it through a soffit, you but. can. However, <laughs> the problem is uh, it, you've got a uh, hot lake moisture air going through an intake where, where um, Air goes inside, not out. So you can push it out, but a lot of hot, laden moisture air goes back up in the softens. Right. So all that is so just going to sweat inside. So still there. Well, an ice cycle right here. So if you vent it out through your soffit, you can probably rest assured that sometime down the road there's going to be maybe mold around that area somewhere. Most houses, a lot of houses, very common to see that. If you have that in your house, it's not too big of a deal to have a contractor come in, run it up through the attic, and vent it out through the roof. That's the way to do it. That's the right way to have it done. Yes, sir. Uh, real quick, I see about windows. Uh, work, uh, because in my mother's attic, when I used to stay up in there, uh, it was really cold around there. Can you uh, put the cellulose around the windows and do that? Okay. Yeah, so one of the things that you can do to do that is you use a, um, I start off with a painter's tool, you know, with the little hook tool mm -hmm. that to clean up a uh, roller off with. Mm -hmm. um, you find them in the painting department. They call them a 123, a 5-in-1, and stuff like that. I take that and I slide it behind the trim to get the trim to kind of loosen up a little bit off of the wall. And then I take a really thin, what I call it, it's called a, like a dovetailed, it's called a dovetailed nail puller. So basically it's like got a cat's paw on one end, and then as it comes down it flares out like this. And 
And this area right here is tapered, and it's kind of hooked. If you look at it from the other side, it's kind of shaped like this, right? And that kind of you can get where you stuck that, oh. that trim tool behind there. It pops the trim loose a little bit, and then you can take this tool and kind of roll the trim off the wall, and you work it along the trim to where the trim completely comes off. And then cut all those nails off with a pair of cutters. The cutters look like this. Nail cutters, right? Yeah. It's a pair of cutters. When you squeeze them together, they, it, it cuts the nail. So you can actually pop those nails, cut them right off, and then once you have the window trim off, you can actually take a knife and score around the edge and, and get yourself like a good three eighths of an inch, probably at least the thickness of this, so that you can see around the perimeter of the window. And then you use a tool like this or a can like this and you foam around that. And then if you didn't damage or destroy your trim, you can put your trim right back into place. Okay. So that's a good way to handle that. So when you, you would do it with the gray stuff instead of cellulose? <clears throat> Windows, yes. Okay. Yes, unless they're really big gaps. Like the old ones with the weights, mm -hmm. the window weights. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a catch-22 is you cut the window weight, the window doesn't work as good. Yeah. But if you insulate that, then the, wind, then the window doesn't work so good. So. <laughs> it's you know, really time to replace the windows at that point. Um, okay, so you want to look for black mold up in there. If you see black mold, you can, one of the things that I like to do is you can get, um, and the EPA has approved certain brands. You can look them up. I can't remember what they're called right offhand, but when I need them, they're easy to find. you got a little mister that aerates up in the attic, and it blows in every direction, and that air spreads out throughout the attic and it kills all the mold that's in your attic. It's a really good thing to use if you have black mold. If anybody has that issue, let me know, and I'll give you further instruction on how to deal with that. Um, corners of the hip room, anybody have hip roofs where it's like sloped down at all four sides? There's no like gable wall. There's no gable wall like this. It doesn't have like an area like this on the side of your house. The roof line actually comes down on all four sides. Anybody have a roof like that? Okay, if you did have a roof like that, all those corners are very hard to access and you want to make sure that you feed the tube all the way into those corners to make sure you get insulation in there. Ventilation we dealt with, baffles we dealt with, gable vents we dealt with, pan ceiling, so like a pan ceiling, a coffer ceiling, or a tray ceiling where you got the ceiling come inside the house, the drywall comes over and then it goes up and then over again. It's like a raised ceiling inside of the ceiling. You want to make sure that you get enough insulation all the way around that because if it comes up like two feet and you only put 10 inches of insulation, the top way all around that won't have any insulation on it. So you can either spray foam around there or you can just pile up enough insulation around that. Flex ducts. Um, there's a lot, a lot going on with heating and air conditioning. Um, I don't really want to go too deep into that. But anywhere where you have... This is important. Every 90 degree turn is equivalent to six feet of heat run. So if you ever go up in there and change stuff around and you go like this and then like this and then like this again, you just made like 18 feet just in three turns. So that makes you have to have more power to push the air through there. So if anybody ever messes with that. The other thing is, as far as all the heating duct is concerned, that you wanna make sure that you put whatever insulation you're putting on the floor on top of the heat duct as well, because you really wanna prevent that from being a heat loss area. Um, Old ducts that are not sealed, we dealt with that. Sloped ceilings. Um, sloped ceilings, once you have an existing house, um, if you have a sloped ceiling, you can actually either peel off the gutter um, and then drill through that fascia board and you can stick a tube all the way up in there and insulate through that way, or you can drill a hole up in the attic in the ceiling through the drywall and feed a tube down there the same way you would do a wall. So those are basically the only two ways to get a, a cathedral ceiling insulated if it's poorly insulated. Um, rodents, pests, and insects, we dealt with that. Anybody else have any questions about anything that's on here? Actually, I think we're going to stop here. Um, I do want to say uh, I wish that you would have been, uh, been more willing to ask questions. <laughs> as a group. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, I, if you guys didn't know so much, I think we, but we could go till 9 a.m., I think, quite frankly, uh, uh, with all that you guys know. The key is things like ventilation, obviously, insulation. As uh, these three gentlemen have pointed out, there's simple things you can do, just common sense things that you can do even around your house, um, and perhaps even attempt to do it yourself. And here, these guys have shown you right here, um, 
in our workshop, the differences between the types of insulation. So, like I said, we could be here till 10 a.m., um, but I, I do want to, uh, to stop now. I That's a good thank one right there, Joseph. Yeah. Yeah. As you guys are leaving, I'll flip through these real quick. And Celeste will have, uh, she has a, a few more questions. That's a skylight. That's a skylight. So, better you than me. Well, I feel like, I, I think it gets to be too much when you're calling me at home. <laughs> so, you guys all have our card. Please send Joseph an email. Um, we do have the, the end of the presentation included a handful of really good tips and tricks about how to how to work with contractors and things to watch out for. Just uh, let's just look at the title slides of these real quick. So we got some quality traits, right? Um, we got 12 questions that you could ask any contractor that comes to your house. Uh, we got zero observations, things you don't ask them about, but things that you observe, right? Are they rolling up in a jalopy? Right? If you email me, I'll send you this information. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. We'll email it to you. And then some follow-up stuff. I need a card. You need a card? I like a card, yeah. Uh, it's the same. He, he's our contact guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's Joseph. Somebody not get a card? I'm Alex Martin. I'm on the website.
Looks like he's still going. Yeah, stopping it now. Say bye.